Ladies and gentlemen, this is the student orientation. Mr. Magdalino Samaco Jr. for the prayer. Let us bow our heads and place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Loving and most gracious Father, we gather together, unified in your name, before we start with our university's student orientation program. With a grateful heart, we praise and thank you for this activity and your purpose for it. We know that when we gather together, you always have a divine agenda. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon Southern Leyte State University and its employees, students, and stakeholders. May we ask for your guidance, wisdom, and divine providence that the activity we set forth today will become fruitful and effective. Grant us courage, boldness, and discernment as we engage in a meaningful discussion in an effort to grow closer as one university. Bestow your grace and divine wisdom to all of us present here so we could cooperate and enjoy camaraderie and love for the greater glory of your name. We ask you to bless and guide all our speakers and committees in charge that they may be able to fulfill their task responsibly, that the objectives they have set may all be achieved. Your generous blessing would mean the success of this orientation program. We know that without it, we can do nothing. Lord, in the midst of pandemic, continue to guide our minds and hearts so that we will be able to work for the good of our community and so that our students may reap the benefits of our collective wisdom and experience. Fill us with the grace of the Spirit and continue to remind us that all that we do and accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. In closing, bless our families, students, co-workers, and administrators with the gifts of kindness, patience, love, and respect as you lead all of us through a successful academic year. Lord, we bring you these prayers and the prayers that we have hold silently in our hearts. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem. <laughs> Ms. Maria Debian Ripolio for the welcome message in behalf of the students. Greetings to our university president, Dr. Pros IVG Yepes, equally respected vice presidents, Dr. Francis Ann R.C. for academics, research, and innovation, Dr. Annabel M. Hufalar, vice president for students and auxiliary services, Madame Mabel R. Calva, Vice President for Administration and Finance, and Dr. Juanita M. Costillas, Vice President for Executive Operation and External Affairs, fellow students, and to all the members of the entire academic community of Southern Leyte State University, good morning. To all freshmen and continuing students, who chose Southern Leyte State University, your home of learning, I, as the student representative 
freshly welcome you all to the Student Orientation 2020. The current and presented situation we live in are unknown to us, and it brings new challenges in our system. But it's a gift for us that we may be able to connect with you virtually. For five long months of staying safe in our respective homes, SLSU are immersed in designing and creating a new approach and navigating ideas for implementation. I know we missed lectures involving boards and chalks. We missed walking around in our beautiful campus and even seeing our teachers and classmates smiles. The current situation presents an opportunity for change. That is why SLSU provide academic stimulus design lecture for new normal while combating the global pandemic. I know for a fact, my dear co-students, that it's been hard, especially in the transition of online and remote distance learning. Some of you are also balancing the new learning arrangement. We know this has not been easy. Today's virtual orientation aims to orient all students of SLSU for this academic year 2020-2021 about the existing policies of the different offices and their students and auxiliary services. We want all of you to engage with us as the success and safety of the students is our greatest priority. Do not hesitate to top us as we are attuned to all students and SLSU value and foster the positive relationship in the entire campus community. Before this message end, in behalf of the students, we witness that the academic program has continued the best extent possible. We realize how much extra work it must have been to even set up the program to let alone change them to a complete online format. With that, we would like to thank you and to the whole team who has been involved in the preparation and continuation of the programs. Finally, I want to specify that safety of you and your loved ones is very important. Let us continue to work together and move forwards for a better tomorrow. Thank you again for staying at home and staying safe. Dr. Pros IVG Yepes for the welcome message in behalf of SLSU. Let me start with a beautiful quotation from Haruki Murakami and I quote, and once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through, how you managed to survive. You won't even be sure whether the storm is really over. But one thing is certain. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what this storm is all about. To the 11,088 students of Southern Leyte State University, my cordial greetings. My respect also to the Honorable Governor of the Province of Southern Leyte, Governor Damian G. Mercado, to all the municipal mayors and other officials of the 18 municipalities of Southern Leyte and of two municipalities of Leyte Province where our kiosks for the implementation of the flexible learning management system are established. To our representative to the House of Congress, Honorable Roger G. Mercado, to our highly esteemed CHED Chairperson, Dr. J. Prospero de Vera, and at the same time, SLSU's Governing Board Chairperson, Dr. Aldrin A. Darilag. To the university officials, faculty members, administrative staff, other stakeholders, a pleasant and wonderful day to us all. 
let me take this opportunity to convey my sincere thanks to all of you, dear students, and to your parents and sponsors for the continued trust you have for Southern Leyte State University that amidst these unprecedented times, our enrollment has increased by 2.59 percent from 10,808 in the first semester of academic year 2019-2020 to 11,088 this first semester of academic year 2020-2021. Indeed, no storm like what COVID-19 pandemic had caused can stop you from getting a good college education. Amidst all uncertainties, learning has to continue and our academic operations must continue as well for learning knows no limitations and no boundaries. For the past six months, the entire SLSU academic community exerted its best efforts to look for better ways and interventions that would ensure continued access to the quality education you always have desired. No amount of hardships, hopelessness, and certainties had stopped your teachers and the administration and even the administrative staff to prepare all of us for the successful opening of classes this academic year 2020-2021. I just hope that all of us will have that vision to translate all the hindrances and hardships to great opportunities. My beloved students, the pandemic has caused disruptions in our lives for six months already, and we are still not certain when all of this will come to end. So keep moving forward. All of you are a part of something larger or greater than yourselves. We will not let this global pandemic stop any of us from becoming who you want to be in the future. Give everything that you can, never give up, stay positive, stay strong, healthy, and more resilient. Always remember that Southern Leyte State University will always be there to provide you the needed guidance, advice, and support should you require them. The academic units and other support offices like the Office of Student Affairs and Services will hand in hand guarantee that in these challenging times, all of you will continue to have beautiful and meaningful learning experiences within a network of care. Moreover, SLSU guarantees to all of you that in this new normal, no student must be left behind. Way forward, the management through our experts is conceptualizing a proposal that is geared towards building a smart university where almost everything will become seamless and a university that is more student, faculty, and staff friendly optimizing the available technologies in this digital age. We will be closely coordinating with our partner agencies, especially the local government units, the DICT, the Commission on Higher Education, and others who could help us achieve this big dream. At this point, let's continue to pray that everything will become better and hopefully, sooner or later, we will be allowed to do face-to-face -face classes because for all you know, we dearly miss you all, students. Meanwhile, just stay at your homes when there's no reason to go out. 
stay positive, and stay healthy. Once again, a pleasant day, and God bless us all. To discuss about the VMGO, let's welcome Dr. Alduin Tevez. To our university president, vice presidents, deans, directors, faculty and staff, and above all, to our dear students, a pleasant morning and welcome to Southern Leite State University. Let me read you the mandate of the university. The basic purpose of the establishment of Southern Leyte State University is clearly stated in Section 2 of the Republic Act 9261 to wit, Section 2, General Mandate. The university shall primarily provide advanced education, higher technological professional instruction and training in trade, fishery, agriculture, forestry, science, education, commerce, engineering, and related courses. It shall also undertake research and extension services and provide progressive leadership in its areas of specialization. Vision, a high quality corporate university of science, technology, and innovation. Mission, SLSU will develop science, technology, and innovation leaders and professionals. Produce high impact technologies from research and innovations. Contribute to sustainable development through responsive community engagement programs. Generate revenues to be self-sufficient and financially viable. Goal one, upgrade the quality of instruction with emphasis on science, technology, and innovation with the following objectives. Increase the number of undergraduate and graduate curricular programs that highlight science, technology, and innovations. Transform all existing curriculum to be aligned with science, technology, and innovations. Goal two, provide responsive and proactive student programs and quality services for optimum student welfare and development with the following objectives. Ensure relevant and responsive student formation and development programs and services needed to promote students' well-being. Strengthen students' capability and skills in leadership, personal and social responsibility areas for sustainable development. Strengthen internal and external partnership with target organizations for sustainable student programs and services. Continuously enhance student services and programs based on student needs in order to improve the quality of student life. Goal three. Intensify human capability development for research and innovation. Objective, increase technical, financial, and infrastructure support to university researchers to achieve the level of demonstration in the production of patents, inventions, utility models, industrial designs, and other scientific knowledge that are relevant for community development. Goal four. Imbibe research attitude in the university. Objective, straighten implementation of policies that regulate and ensure consistent production of research and innovation. Goal five, develop and sustain a culture of research and innovation with objective. Increase the number of faculty, staff, and students' engagement in research and innovation activities. Goal six, Implement responsive extension programs, projects, activities for sustainable development. Objectives. Increase the number of faculty and staff engagement in research-based extension programs, projects, activities. Increase the number of industry collaboration in the implementation of extension programs. Improve the adoption rate of package technologies. Improve impact of extension PPAs based on social, economic, environmental, and political parameters, and achieve high level of satisfaction in the implementation of relevant interventions for sustainable development. Goal seven, generate sustainable revenue streams to implement SLSU development plans and program with the following objectives. Provide venues of faculty, staff, and students to hone their business acumen Increase viable business and economic enterprises. 
maximize the utilization of university's human and physical assets with resource generation potential, promote commercialization of developed technologies, engage and to venture capital through public-private partnerships, revitalize other doable resource generation activities in partnership with alumni affairs and industrial relation office. Goal eight, enhance the transparency, efficiency, and effectiveness of the management system with the following objectives. Improve public information services and practices. Enhance human resource management system. Apply IT-based systems in the delivery of services. Improve efficiency and effectiveness of managers, faculty, and administrative staff. Sustain the standardized processes and procedures. Improve efficiency in fiscal governance. Increase linkages, collaborative ventures with national and international organizations. Modernize and upgrade physical plant facilities and services. Thank you for choosing Southern Leyte State University as your alma mater. To our students, welcome, welcome, welcome. The inspirational message of Honorable Damian G. Mercado. My respect to all the officers, employees, and students of Southern Leyte State University Good morning. We are presently in a very challenging time. Although difficult, it is not at all hopeless. Why? Because I am confident that we can overcome this. As Southern Latinos and as Filipinos, we are gifted with unbreakable spirit inspiring us to not give up and to be strong amidst extraordinary challenges. Besides, we are people with a strong faith in our Creator. And for as long as we are committed to go through this as one, we will eventually defeat COVID-19. I understand the struggles you have to go through in the field of academia. This is an area that is totally different from the ones you are used to encounter daily. Other than budget constraints, you are also have to deal with different sentiments and attitudes of your fellow students. Your parents and your educators, I can relate with your concern for I myself is not so comfortable with virtual conferencing. Much more vir virtual learning, but as I said earlier, we are into this together. We can be assured that the provincial government is there to give you our support. It is my wish that whether whatever adjustment or problems we encounter along the way, we can deal with them with clear minds. To all our dear students, be excited. This is a different experience. Be prepared to embrace the new normal. When all this pass and you are able to come out of this battle victorious, you can proudly tell those who follow your footsteps 
perhaps your future children. That you have been a part of this struggle and that you have willingly done your best to contribute to the victory in the end. As your governor, ako, uban sa tanang mga officials of Southern Litinius, dako ko o pagsalig sa tanang mga estudyante o walay COVID pandemic ang makaundang sa katumanan sa inyong mga tambo kay kamo ang buktong paglaom sa kalambuan sa Southern Lake. Dagang salamat. May God bless us all. The presentation of the organizational structure. University, Dr. Bros. Ivy G. Yepes. This is the organizational structure of the office of the university president. Academics, Research and Innovations, Dr. Francis Ann R.C. Good morning. Please allow me to share with you the structure of the Vice President for Academics, Research and Innovation. Under the direction of the University President, the Vice President for Academics, Research and Innovation serves as the Chief Academic Officer of the University and is responsible for educational policy and academic programs. This includes program review and improvement, accreditation and self-evaluation, assessment of student learning, and advancement of student success, academic personal decisions, faculty development program, budget development, enrollment management, program and curriculum development, and the encouragement and improvement of teaching and learning. Complementary thereto is the VP's responsibility in promoting the university's mission relative to its research and innovative activities. The VIPARI closely collaborates with the university president and works with the members of the academic and administrative units to ensure that the implementation of the various R&D programs is coordinated with the colleges and research and innovation centers. Moreover, the VIPARI shall work hand in hand with the VPEOEA through the director for external linkages and extension services for the timely and effective transfer, utilization, adoption, and commercialization of knowledge, products, and technologies produced by the various colleges, institutes, departments, and by the research and innovation centers. Similarly, international mobility and industry partnership concerns are considered as shared functional roles between VIPAARI and VPEOEA. The office plays a major role in upholding quality standards which encompasses academic, scientific, and technological reviews. The VIPARI shall have academic and RDI leaders under her direct supervision to wit, Director for Instruction, Director for Research and Innovation, Directors for Research and Innovation Centers. So far, we have six centers, namely we have BioProtech, CONFOR, GIS TESI, SHARE, ARIC, and CREMS Med. Then next, we also have ETSO Manager, Head, Journal Production and Management Office, University Librarian, University Registrar, University NSTP Director, Director, Graduate School with the different program chairs,
college deans with different department heads and institute director. Moreover, the VIPARI is in close coordination with the campus directors through the assistant directors for academics, research, and innovation. They shall oversee and supervise the academic affairs, research, and innovative activities of the colleges and departments and the operations of the library, registrar, and STP offices of the external campuses. Likewise, the department head and or institute director shall be assisted by an area chairperson if necessary who shall perform the following tasks. Syllabi review, training design preparation, classroom observation and evaluation, project procurement management plan preparation, faculty performance evaluation, and faculty attendance monitoring. The university has established colleges and institutes by clustering the different academic departments of the main and external campuses according to disciplines for the purpose of harmonizing the offering of curricular programs for efficiency and quality assurance. The university has established research and innovation centers that are responsible in producing science, technology, and innovation products to cater to the needs of the industry and target community and promotes inclusive growth and sustainable development. Department heads and program chairpersons of academic programs who are affiliated with the colleges based in another campus shall closely coordinate with the concerned college deans when it comes to academic matters such as curriculum revision tailored with industry needs and other academic activities relevant to promoting quality assurance, competitiveness of graduates, and program sustainability. All other concerns of the colleges and departments based in the external campuses shall be governed by the campus directors. Department heads and or program chairpersons of the academic programs that are offered in the campus but affiliated with the colleges based on other campus shall be under the direct supervision of VPRE in the case of SLSU main campus and ADARI in the case of external campuses. Academic related matters such as curriculum revision, syllabi preparation and evaluation, assessment of students and faculty performances assessment of students' learning performance and the like are directly under the supervision of the college deans. To ensure that curriculum and instruction is strategically aligned with research and innovations, industry-driven and advancing internationalization, the curriculum planning and development committee is also reconstituted to include the directors or heads of these concerned divisions or units together with an invited industry, alumni, and ICT representatives as resource person. So thank you, and that is all for the VPRD. Administration and Finance, Dr. Mabel R. Calva. This is the organizational structure of the Office of Administration and Finance. Executive Operations and External Affairs, Dr. Juanita M. Costillas. This is the organizational structure of the Office of Executive Operations and External Affairs.
Students and Auxiliary Services, Dr. Annabel M. Hoffelar. Good morning, Southern Leyte State University. Students and Auxiliary Services are the services and programs in the university that are concerned with academic support experiences of students to attain holistic development. The SAS office shall provide responsive and proactive student programs and quality services for optimum student welfare and development. SAS offices are led by competent professionals with humane attitudes and are service-oriented to help realize the vision, mission, goals, and objectives of the university as well as the SAS objectives. My honor and privilege to present to you, dear students, the organizational structure of the SAS office in order to provide you a clear path on where to go and home to approach in times you need assistance from the office. Our university is composed of six campuses which have uniqueness in the program offerings and physical setup, and this holds true in the organizational structure of the students and auxiliary services. Allow me to present to you the SAS structure of the main campus. The structure of the main campus is headed by a vice president directly under the university president with two directors the Director for Students and Services, and Director for Auxiliary Services. Under the two directors are the different units of student services with head in every office. For other campuses, SAS organizational structure is headed by an Assistant Director for Students and Auxiliary Services directly under the campus director. Under the ADSAS are the different units of student services and programs led by head for every unit. Dear students, the SAS office is willing to serve you, so keep in touch and posted. Do not hesitate to ask help from us. We will try our very best to serve you. Stay safe and God bless everyone. Thank you. The presentation of students at Auxiliary Services. <music> Student Welfare, Ms. Ninita V. Flores. A pleasant morning to one and all. My task is to present the student welfare and services of the university needed to ensure and promote the well-being of students. This include the following basic services. Orientation and information guidance and counseling, career and placement, economic enterprise development, and the student handbook development. This activity we are doing now is just one way of providing the information you ought to know. Official announcements and communications will be posted in the official Facebook page of Southern Lady State University. Also, there are links available if you need more information specific to a certain office. So, you will know where to access the official and legit communication coming from the Southern Lady State University. Another service is the guidance and counseling, which provides assistance and guidance to students pertaining to problems in academic, career, personal, which concern one's personality, also includes family problems, those with psychological problems, educational, and career counseling needs. The Guidance and Counseling Office assists the students through the various services in establishing their educational goals, developing career direction, and making personal adjustment to get the most from their college experience. So I have a question, who needs guidance? The Guidance and Counseling Office anchored in this premise. Human being needs help. Some need it once, others need it regularly, 
while others need it all the time. So with this principle, guidance is for all and guidance is preventive in nature. The role of the guidance counselor in discipline is to help find out the possible effects of one's behavior. The counselor will assist the individual to make an intelligent move to effect a change in his or her behavior as well as his or her attitude. The basic services in guidance and counseling as expressed in Republic Act 9258 or the Counseling Act of 2004 as expressed in Section 3 are the services that involves the use of integral approach to the development of well-functioning individual. The guidance and counseling program is designed to assist every student understand oneself as he or she faces new environment while moving towards the future. So these are the basic services in the guidance and counseling office. Individual inventory. So this is the gathering of student information which you will fill up the student profile form online. Through this, the individual record, your record can help us assess your needs, either for counseling or any other intervention needed. Rest assured that the Data Privacy Act of 2012 is strictly observed. Another service is the counseling, the main thrust and the heart of the guidance program, which the guidance counselors will help an individual become emotionally, socially, spiritually, and psychologically responsible by making intellectual decisions and proper adjustments to the different circumstances in life. At most, confidentiality is observed. Another is the assessment and appraisal. This is an important tool that would help you, dear students, gain understanding of your needs, personality, your potentials, as well as your strengths and weaknesses with the use of appropriate standardized psychological test. This is conducted by a licensed psychometrician of the university. We also have consultation, which refers to the mutual sharing and analysis of information to facilitate decision-making and learning about strategies for helping the counselee or the client. We have lined up prevention and wellness activities that would help Foster prevention as it is better than cure. There will be series of group sessions and activities designed, which will be presented later. Then we also have referral. This will help you provide information and linking on services beyond the expertise of the guidance counselor. We conduct follow-up. This is a formal monitoring of the individual's progress of current students who have undergone counseling, referral, or any special intervention program. This will help determine the cause of failure, absences, and even dropouts. We also have other services, though the issuance of excuse slip is only applicable on the face-to-face -face setting. We also have the peer facilitating or the peers helping peers. Interested sophomore and junior students who are willing to be trained to reach out and assist their peers. The trained students will become peer facilitators and serve as an extending arm in the guidance and counseling office. We conduct parents' conference and home visitation as the need arise. Kato mentions the group sessions are scheduled online for this academic year, such as but not limited to college adjustment, time management, effective study habits, career planning and goal setting, psychological first aid, psychosocial support, which includes self-care and self-regulating activities, building resilience in times of crisis, stress management, and how to stay empowered. Another important uh, service in the student welfare is the career and placement. The university provides an office for occupational fitness and employment for the students. This office appraises students' data for career and job placement, monitor and follow up the condition of the students and their workplace to address concerns, 
both the students and agencies of assignment. Maintenance of active networking with school, community, alumni, and other relevant agencies shall be established. In addition, these are services that would help students and even graduates find work by preparing them through the following. So there will be series of career seminars such as effective communication in the workplace, maximizing one's potential, job seeking seminar, application letter writing, resume writing, and job fair. Uh, another service is through the economic enterprise. Students and registered student organizations are encouraged to engage in enterprising activities, the purpose of which is to generate income to support programs, projects of students, and their respective organizations. The last but not the least, the student welfare and services shall be taking care in development of student handbook, which contains the rules and regulations that the students of Southern Leyte State University shall observe at all times. At this point, allow me to present to you the personnel responsible in the implementation of student welfare and services of SLSU. So we have here for SLSU Sugod Campus, the head of student welfare and services, yours truly, Mrs. Flores, with Ms. Minerva B. Baclayon, the head of career center and services at SLSU Sugod Campus, Ms. Monaria R. Caballo, a registered psychometrician, our university psychometrician based at SLSU Sugod Campus, Dr. Maria Lita J. Arcun, a registered guidance counselor, the Assistant Director of Student Affairs and Services and Head of Student Welfare and Services of SLSU Hinunangan Campus. Dr. Elisha S. Alvarado, the Assistant Director of Student Affairs and Services and Head of Student Welfare and Services of SLSU San Juan Campus. Ms. Colina E. Mercado, a Registered Guidance Counselor and a Licensed Psychometrician, the Head of Student Welfare and Services of SLSU Maasin City Campus. Ms. Evelyn T. Guasa, a registered guidance counselor, the head of student welfare and services of SLSU Bontok Campus. Ms. Abigail T. Bano, head of student welfare and services, and Ms. April Rose L. Estrella of SLSU Tomas Opos Campus. You can reach us at SLSU Guidance and Counseling Office SLSU Career Center and Services, and SLSU Testing Services Facebook page. Before I end, dear students, please be reminded that whatever challenges you are facing now and will be facing, may you find joy each day and know that you are supported. Somebody is there to support and help you. It is okay to ask for help. May you try your best in everything that you do. Stay positive and hopeful. Keep in touch and keep posted. See you online in our upcoming activities. With this, thank you. God bless everyone and stay safe. Student Programs and Services, Dr. Britza Lee G. Kapili. Good morning, everyone. For the Institutional Student Programs and Services, these are the programs and activities offered by the university to facilitate the delivery of essential services to the students. We have the admission. These are the services that take care of the processing of students' entrance requirements, like the entrance examination and the posting of qualified students for admission. We have also the food services to guarantee that food served within the campus and immediate vicinity is available and adequate, safe, and healthy in accordance with the food safety and sanitation guidelines of the Department of Health. We have also student housing and residential services, assistance provided to ensure access to accommodation that is safe and conducive to learning. 
For the culture and arts program, these are the set of activities designed to provide opportunities to develop and enhance talents, abilities, and values for appreciation, promotion, and conservation of national culture and multicultural heritage. We have also the sports development program. These are programs designed for physical fitness and wellness to students. For social and community involvement programs, these are the programs and opportunities designed to develop social awareness, personal internalization, and meaningful contribution to nation building. We have also services for students with special needs and persons with disabilities. These are the programs and activities designed to provide equal opportunities to persons with disabilities, indigenous people, solo parent. We have also the multi-faith services, provision of an environment conducive to free expression of one's religious orientation in accordance with institutional principles and policies. We have also services for foreign international students. This provide assistance to address the needs of foreign students. And the last one is the scholarship and financial services. The management, generation, and or allocation of funds for scholarship and financial aid to deserving students. We have the DOST, the CHED STUFAP, or the Tulung Dunung, the LGU Scholarship Financial Grant. We have also private and non-government financial grant and the Institutional Scholarship Financial Grant. And of course, the Republic Act 10931 or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education ensures government full subsidy to students who intend to earn tertiary or technical vocational education. And under this Republic Act 10931 is the Tertiary Education Subsidy, or the TES. Ano ang TES? Ang Tertiary Education Subsidy, or TES, ay isang grant-in-aid program ng gobyerno upang suportahan ang halaga o bahagi ng gastusin ng mga estudyante sa kanilang pag-aaral sa kolehiyo. Ano ang mga binipesyo ng TES? Of course, it covers free higher education, and a 40,000 per academic year or 20,000 per semester. Sino ang maaring mag-apply ng TES? Filipino citizen, kwalipikado sa admission at retention requirements ng inyong higher education institutions, at hindi pa lumagpas sa maximum residency policy nito. Hindi pa na-expel sa anumang HEI. Enrolled sa SOOCs, CHED recognized looks at programa ng pribadong paaralan na nasa CHED registry. At kwalipikado sa ilalim ng anumang polisiyang ipapatupad ng UNIFAST board sa hinaharap. Sino ang may prioridad sa TES? Dahil limitado ang pundong nakalaan sa TES, ang pamahagi nito ay nakabatay sa sumusunod na kategorya. Una, kasalukuyang TS grantee at mga binipesyaryo ng ESG PPA. Pangalawa, estudyanteng naka-enroll sa isang pribadong HEI sa munisipyo o syudad na walang SUC o LUC sa lugar. Pangatlo, estudyanteng kasama sa listahan 2.0 ng DSWD National Household Targeting Office na nakarank ayon sa estimated per capita household income. At pang-apat, estudyanteng hindi bahagi ng listahan 2.0 at nakarank ayon sa estimated per capita household income basis sa mga dokumento, proof of income na itinakda yung UNIFAST board. Paano mag-apply sa TES? Pagkatapos ng mag-enroll, Makipag-ugnayan sa TES focal person ng inyong eskwelahan tungkol sa proseso ng pag-apply sa TES portal. Ang impormasyon ng mga TES applicants ay isa yung submit ng TES focal person sa TES portal. Ano ang mga dokumentong kailangan dito? Una, Certificate of Registration of Enrollment. Then, Assessment of Fees. 
certificate of residen residency if applicable, and photocopy of PWD ID if applicable. Paano ang proseso ng TS application? Ang impormasyon ng TS applicants ay isasubmit ng TS focal person sa TS portal ng HEI. Magkakaroon ng nationwide assessment, tapos uh, ipapaalam ng eskwelahan ang mga estudyante kung sila ay nakapasok sa list of qualified grantees. Isasubmit ng estudyante na napabilang sa qualified test or list ang mga documentary requirements sa kaniyang eskwelahan at isasubmit ng eskwelahan sa CHED Regional Office ang Certified Documentary Requirements. Pagkatapos ng verification na apurubahan ng UNIFAST Board ang mga Master List of Qualified Grantees na ibibigay sa eskwelahan, tatanggapin na ng mga eskwelahan ang pondo para sa distribution ng grants sa mga TS beneficiaries. Sa ngayon, Ang alokasyon sa TES for fiscal year 2020 ay 18.3 billion. At yung mga TES grantee natin kailangang mag-open ng ATM account sa Land Bank of the Philippines. So you have to see or message your campus scholarship or TES coordinator for further details and information. Thank you very much. Student Development, Mr. Sherwin Kadai. Good morning. I'm tasked for the student development. If you really want to experience college life, you should plan to make most of your free time when you are attending any lectures and classes. The activity pack student lifestyle means that finding student organization to match your interest is not likely to be difficult. You can actually find student organization for almost anything you want, any interest or hobby you have. You will find society active in that area. It's best to start researching to the student organization based on your SLSU college or campus. This will make it easier to choose and join the societies you like when you get there. While the range of variety of student societies on offer is a vast, most fall into these different criteria or categories. These are programs and activities designed for enhancement and deepening of leadership skills and social responsibilities, which include student organization and activities, professional organization or societies, special interest, leadership training, student council government, student discipline, student publication, and media. Student activities refers to the supervision, recognition, and monitoring of student organization and their activities, such as leadership programs, student publication, student organizations, sports development, volunteerism, peer helper programs, and others. The SLSU have the system of accreditation, reaccreditation, monitoring, and evaluation using participatory institutional procedures and processes in recognition of basic rights to organize. Requirements and procedures for recognition Accreditation of student groups shall be widely disseminated. The SLSU provides accredited student organizations adequate office space and other institutional support. The Constitution and Bylaws of Student Organization provide for and require participation in activities on anti-drug abuse, awareness, and drug abuse prevention initiated by the government and non-government organizations. There shall be a mechanism to coordinate with the school administration relative to the treatment and rehabilitation of students with drug-related problems. All organizations shall be registered in the Office of Student Affairs and Services and shall be under its supervision on the matters pertaining to the implementation of this code. SLSU is committed 
to the development of student leadership potential as a vital factor in nation building. The university provides opportunities for students to exercise their potential in leading their fellow students. All students are encouraged to join in any organization they wish a stepping stone in their future careers. The university may recognize fraternities and sororities provided they conform to the provision of the law stated in the Republic Act number 8049. Each curricular related student organization recognized by the institution shall have a faculty advisor for co-curricular clubs, the department heads or the directors and deans shall appoint advisors. In cases in interest clubs, university or college chapters of national organization and curricular year assemblies, the members and officers of the club organization will choose the advisor subject to issuance of appointment by the Director of Student Affairs. Activities of recognized organization must be conducted only after the approval of the head or the director is obtained. The president of the or each organization, upon accomplishing the permit to hold activity, will now proceed in complying other required forms for the university facilities and equipment. We have here examples of organization in different college and campus of our university. We have Criminal Justice Student Organization of the main campus. We have also the Information Communication Technology Society of the main campus. We have the Esalicio San Juan Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants. In leadership trainings, these are programs and opportunities to develop and enhance leadership effectiveness in the personal level and student organization. The SLS ensures that the leadership training programs are provided and opportunities for interaction with counterparts from their institutions. These trainings include youth-led Philippines, iTransforms, which is attended by our student leaders and advisors. The student council and government refers to the student body duly organized and elected by the students themselves with due recognition and authority as the student's official representative in the matters affecting them. As well as you recognize the rights of the student to govern themselves as a student body, to be transparent and accountable to their constituents and be represented in various for where the students need to be consulted. SLSU also ensures the transparency in development, revision of guidelines, and procedures for the student council and government. The student council and government is spearheaded by the Federation of Supreme Student Council, headed by Honorable Maria Debbie Ann S. Repolio. The SSC president of the Bondo Campus, headed by Honorable Cyril T. Chico. The Hinunangan Campus, Sherwin H. Salvane. For the Masin City College, Eugene Luzon. For the Thomas Opos, Roxanne D. Abrantes. San Juan, Jeremiah De La Cruz. For student publication, which refers newspaper, folios, yearbook, and other, must be approached as a serious work of journalism. It should report and explain noteworthy events in the life of the institution and provide for a medium student expression. Working with the student's publication can be an amazing experience. It is a chance while they are still students to not only teach teamwork but help them develop skill sets such as writing and photography and even technological skills such as production of digital copy editing. However, none of that will happen if the student production is not well organized from the start. Realizing the importance of the freedom of speech and expression among the students, the university allows the publication and maintenance of a free, responsible, and responsive student publication. The RA 1779 states that every student in all academic levels should be thankful for its provision. Not only those in the law uphold and protect the freedom of the press at the campus ranks, it also promotes development and growth of the campus journalism as it means of strengthening ethical values, encouraging critical and creative thinking, and developing moral character and personal discipline of the Filipino youth. 
The challenge now for our students is to live up with expectation of the act. Expectations such as encouragement of creative and critical thinking, and more importantly, value strengthening, strengthening and moral character formation. We have here the list of student publications for our different campus of Southern Lady State University. For the main campus, we have the headliner, the fish ponder of the Bonto campus, the light of the Thomas Opus campus, the green paradise of the Hinunangan campus, Erudite Sentinel of the San Juan, and MC Sinian of the Masin City Campus Student Publication. For student discipline, this refers to judicious implementation of institutional rules and regulations governing student behavior and conduct. As LSU have a gender and disability sensitive rules and regulations formulated in the consultation with the students and faculty and published in a student manual that is accessible and disseminated to students, including students with disabilities, faculty, and concurred in by parents. The rules and regulations define appropriate student conduct and prescribe sanction for misconduct, such as but not limited to acts of vandalism, exaggerated utterances, irresponsible and libelous statements, and other negative acts of militancy that threaten the peace and order and private and public properties inside the university. A discipline committee is established to ensure due process in dealing with student misconduct. There shall be a timely mechanism to address student grievances. There are offenses and penalties for students who violate the rules and regulation of the university. They will be penalized according to the following procedures depending on the nature of the offense. Major offenses A, B, C, and G must be dealt with accordingly. Minor offenses D, E, and F. For first offense, there will be warning and a promissory letter to be given to the Director of Student Affairs and the Department Head or College or Deans. Second offense, punishable based on the respective offenses. Any repetition of an offense shall be dealt with more severely. There are offenses punishable by one year suspension and maximum of dismissal and expulsion. For example, assaulting any faculty, staff, or students inside a campus. Any act of subversion or affiliation with or participation in subversive movements. Participating in illegal, national, and institutional strikes, rallies, and demonstration, and many others stated in our student manual. There are also offenses punishable by minimum of one semester suspension and maximum of one year suspension. We have here an example of indecency which pertains to the sexual behavior which includes nicking, kissing, pitting in public and other related acts, carrying deadly weapons like knife or any bladed weapon or any lethal instrument, habitual disregard or, willf or willful violation of established policies and regulations, habitual drunkenness, habitual cheating during examination, bribery, gambling inside or within the campus, and others. There are also offenses punishable by minimum of three months suspension and maximum of one semester suspension. You have your example, coming to school under the influence of liquor, drinking in the classroom, hallways, office buildings, dormitories, and other places in the campus. Battle smashing and similar acts that may cause accidental injuries to motorists and pedestrians. Destroying field experiments, stealing or destroying test paper and school properties. Offenses punishable by minimum of one week suspension and maximum of two weeks suspension, which is staying in the dormitories or quarters of the opposite sex beyond visiting hours, carving, staining, and writing, drawing on any school property. There are also offenses punishable by minimum of three days suspension and maximum of one week suspension. Example, any form of dishonesty, 
deceit, like cheating during examination, recitation, and the like. Littering, such as dropping of candy wrappers, peeling pieces of papers, and others. Using cell phones while attending class. There is a committee on discipline in every campus and colleges of the university, which is spearheaded by the campus director for the external campus or the vice president for academics, research, and innovation in the main campus. The committee also composed of one faculty member as recommended by the faculty organization, one non-teaching staff as recommended by the administrative staff organization, two representatives from the SSC as recommended by the SSC officers, and a secretary who will be appointed by the chairperson in his or her non-voting capacity. During this time of pandemic, the school continued to be closed. Many faculty have relied on online learning environments to educate students. A bill has been filed at the House of Representatives defining penalizing cyberbullying or the act of posting rude, offensive, or insulting message against the victim on the internet. By penalizing act of cyberbullying, people are encouraged to become responsible citizens and make them accountable for their cyber actions. Cyberbullying via social media seen as a crime. Picking on someone on Facebook become a crime. As a result, internet bashing has become a culture among internet users and even spawned problems that involve hostility and aggression. A great saying states that a pen is mightier than a sword. When this was once said, it was to highlight the power of thoughts and ideas over brute force and violence as a way to affect change. Today, the pen can very well be tapped of a button as a social media has reinvented our way for a good or for bad. Thank you very much. Auxiliary Services, Dr. Elisha Alvarado. Good morning, Southern Leyte State University. I will be presenting on the Auxiliary Services in which there are four areas covered. Number one, Disaster Risk Reduction Management. Number two, health services. Number three, security services. And finally, safety services. According to Republic Act number 10121, otherwise known as PDRRM Act of 2010, an act strengthening the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management System, providing for the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Framework institutionalizing the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Plan, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. We also have um, organizational uh, structure on disaster control group and we have it in our university. We have to remember that the Philippines was the most disaster prone country in the world for the past century. This is according to the Center for Research on the Epidemiology of Disasters or CRED. And that we have a lot of challenges that we have to respond accordingly. According to the ranking, Philippines has that World Risk Index of 24.32 in which we can say we are really in uh, high risk and what we are to prepare for and we have to address it through our DRRM. The DRRM plans and leads the guiding activities in the field of number one, communication, warning signals, emergency, transportation, evacuation, rescue, engineering, health and rehabilitation. We also have public education and auxiliary services such as firefighting, earthquake drill, and police in the country. Number two, we have now the health services. Our university has to deliver a responsive healthcare services and programs to students and employees with competent SLSU health personnel. Medical services from a competent school physician and dental services from a competent school dentist. 
presence of school nurse in all campuses, presence of trained first aid, first aid team in all campuses. Number three, we have the security services. Our university has to implement proper protocols for guests who will be entering the school campus to guard and protect the premise, buildings, vehicles, materials, supplies, and other properties of Southern Leyte State University campuses, including the safeguarding of the employees and students within the guarded premises and such other offices, installations, facilities, and or projects of the SLSU campus as may be determined from time to time. We also have to conduct webinars and provide online materials on safety and security during emergency situations. Finally, we have safety services. Access to accommodation that is safe and conducive to learning through student housing and residential services. Conduct mapping of boarding houses in the locality and provide directory for students. We also have to ensure the post safety protocols in dormitories and boarding houses, such as facilitate support services for students who are looking for and in need of housing, provide informative materials in accessible formats on student housing facilities, both on campus and off campus, submit annual report of accomplishments and other related reports to the Director of Student Services, and perform other related functions as may be directed by the Director of Student Services. Finally, let me end this quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. Thank you. Let us be entertained by an intermission number from SLSU Maasin City Campus. Salasio San Juan Campus in their intermission number. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Southern Lady State University. Welcome to the home of King Fishers, Southern Lady State University. Founded on March 7, 2004, by virtue of Republic Act 9261, the Southern Lady State University operates in Bontok, Kinunangan, Maasin City, San Juan, Tumas Opus, and Sugod as the main campus all in the province of Southern Lipe. In 2014, the then vivacious Vice President for Research, Development and Extension, Dr. Pros Ivy Guasa Yepes, took the helm as the third SLSU President and within a span of time, rallied the entire university into new heights in the realm of quality higher education in the region and bridging leadership on high-quality corporate science and technology and innovation in the service areas. <music> Investing in academic programs that produce prolific SNT leaders and responsible scientists. a leading university in socio-economic, technological, and environmental progress. Forging sustainable partnerships with local governments and communities. Transforming students' lives by being responsible in providing quality services to students while studying. The higher education landscape continues to thrive in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Southern Lady State University is in living to sustain its quality service for all. For over the past couple of months, SLSU strive to be innovative yet flexible. Hand in hand, everybody has worked hard together to provide an entirely better, new normal experience. And to address the online needs of the students and stakeholders, SLSU is launching SLSU, provided and created for the students and stakeholders by Southern Lady State University, the university that sincerely serves. A concept by Dr. Pros Ivy G. Yepes, Dr. Edda J. Upina. Design and system by Dr. Alex Bacalia, Dr. James Brian Flores, and Mr. Nesni Hundrada. SLSU is your online learning hub, your online information system, and your online SLSU experience. To you, our beloved students, Welcome to Academic Year 2020-2021. SLSU is you. We are SLSU because of you.